Oh, boys and girls, I'll tell you, it's kind of weird being a Z Connect teacher sometimes. I literally just got done doing the science lesson in the garage from Friday. So then I said goodbye to you. We danced. I'm kind of sweaty. And then I ran back up here and I am working on my uh, reading lesson for you. So kind of goofy. So I'm trying to get Monday ready a little bit so I don't have to stay up late Sunday night. Now, what we're going to focus on here is back to the story, Recess Queen. And you might say, oh, Mr. Ashby, why does Jean have to be so mean? Well, I know why. I know why. It's because, wait for it, Jean isn't real. She's not a real person. She's a character. She's make-believe. She's fiction. That word fiction is really important. Say that with me. Fiction. Fiction, some kids remember as being fake. Fiction is fake. This story isn't real. It never happened. But the author, her name is Alexis, she wrote this story to teach us a lesson. Sometimes we call it a lesson or a message. Today we're going to read through and see if we can learn what, what do you think the lesson or the message is? And in fact, the author, Alexis, she might have been trying to teach us 10 different lessons, right? There could be many lessons in a story. Um, so let's take a look back through and see if we can find out what happened. At the very beginning, we get introduced to the characters. That happens a lot in fiction stories. They give you the characters first right away. So we have Mean Gene, right? And then we learn about the other characters, the other kids. And we learn all about them. They're scared of her, right? They don't swing until Mean Gene swings. They don't kick until Mean Gene kicks. They don't bounce their balls until Mean Gene bounces her balls first, right? She is the boss, right? Well, that's just the way things work. Then the author keeps telling you about the character, about Gene and how she um, pounds on kids. In fact, the author even made up some words. I don't know if you noticed. It says, if the kids ever crossed her, she'd push them and smush them, lollapoolish them, hammer them, slammer them, kits and kajammer them. A couple things I want you to know. Do you see the M? Smush them. That is actually the word them. She took the TH away. And instead of the TH, she put that little symbol there called an apostrophe. But anyway, smush them, push them, right? Well, she made up a word, lollapoolish. That's not even a real word, right? Slammer them, kits and kajammer them. She made she made up some words, I think, to make it read really fun and be um, rhymey, a little bit rhymey, and fun to read. This story is very fun to read, especially this page. So she's pointing at the kids. Look at she says, "Say what?" Mean Jean growled. "Say who?" Mean Jean howled. "Say you." Just who do you think you're talking to? I just have to tell you, in your seesaw lesson, I just couldn't stand it. Here, I'm going to share it with you. Um, one of your pages is page two, is I want you to read that. <laughs> so I'm going to have you record your voice saying, and sounding like Mean Jean the Recess Queen. I want you to use your Mean Jean voice, because that's what the reader wants us to do. The reader wants us to feel like the characters, make those connections to the characters, right? So it's good to read the way that Mean Gene would actually talk. So that's one of your jobs to do in Seesaw today for Reading Workshop. Um, we already can probably guess at the lesson. I mean, how many of you, you, could, you can raise your hand if you want to, even though I can't really see you right now, how many of you would say, that's mean, that's wrong. It's wrong and it's not right. It's not what we should do. We should not be mean. We should not be growling and howling at people and shouting at them and kids and kajammering them. I think we all agree that that's wrong. In fact, that might be one of the messages, one of the lessons. Then Katie Sue comes, and this is that turning point in the story where we go from the problem to starting to get to the solution, right? Now, you notice I'm really not reading the whole story. What I'm doing now is retelling. I'm using the pictures to kind of retell the story in my own words. Well. We get to know Katie Sue now, right? The author lets us get to know Katie Sue. And we know she's fun-loving, right? 
She's super fun. She likes to play sports, right? She likes to kick soccer balls and jump on tramps. Problem is, we know, is that she did that stuff before Mean Jean did it. And that makes Mean Jean mad, right? And of course, Mean Jean is chasing after Katie Sue and she's kissing Kajamaran kids as she charged after that Katie Sue. Charged like a bull. And then she does her line, say what? <laughs> and she scares Katie Sue a little bit, but not much, right? I know I would be scared, but here's what Katie Sue does. Katie Sue, that puny thing, that loony thing, she just talked right back. And I love this part. How did you get so bossy? Then that puny thing, that loony thing, grabbed the ball and bounced away. <laughs> she just took off. Well, I think that's great. And honestly, I think that might be another message. The first message was what not to do. This message might be what to do, what you should do. I think Alexis, the author, I think she wants us to learn, you know, if somebody's being mean to you, just get away, walk away, run away, right? And it's okay to tell them to stop. How did you get so bossy? That's kind of what Katie Sue did. She wants those, she, I think Alexis, the author, wants us to know that you can speak up for yourself. Now, Katie Sue could have said something like, please stop. She chose to handle it differently, but she walked away, and that could be a lesson, right? So two, two messages here, two lessons so far that I know, one not to do and one to do. Well, let's see if there's more. Oh, yeah, I remember now. She is furious, man. Steam coming out of her ear. And she thundered close behind. I love those words. And, of course, everybody else is scared, right? They're worried about what's going to happen. And this is the major, probably the most important part of the story, right? Because Katie Sue just turned everything right around and said, why don't you come play with me? I like ice cream. I like tea. I want Jean to jump with me. She wants Jean to come and play. She invited, invited her to play. Well, we know what happens next, right? Jean is shocked. She doesn't know what to do. And then, of course, they become friends. But, man, that is a huge, huge part in the story. And I think the author, Alexis, that's another part. She wants us to learn what to do. We should invite kids to play. Sometimes kids are mean because they're lonely. And one way we could do it is invite kids to play who are mean and, 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 and become friends with them and show them how to be nice, show them how to have fun. Now, let's just say that didn't work out. Probably you're a great reader and you might be asking, well, what if mean Jean would have just pounded on her? <laughs> well, that could have happened. Of course, this story isn't real. So, Alexis wanted us to learn a lesson by making Mean Jean turn nice. And if she did, I bet, though, I bet if Mean Jean was still mean, I'll bet, I'll bet that Katie Sue would have just gone away. And you know what I really hope? And this is not part of the story. But, man, I hope that if anybody was ever being treated mean like that, they would tell the teacher. Because teachers would never let that happen. We have to know about it. So reporting, right? Report the problem. All right, back to the story. So major, major lesson there about inviting someone to play. And maybe that will change their heart, like the Grinch, like we talked about last week. And of course, we know the ending. They become great friends. And the rest is history, as they say. It's kind of over at that point. They just talk about now everybody's happy and the problem is solved. Now. I want to show you around into Seesaw a little bit. Here's what you're going to do. First thing you already know is that I want to just hear you sound like mean Jean. So you might have to practice this a little bit. When you're ready to record, you hit the microphone button. But I want to teach you something you might not know. So let's see if it's going to let me do this. Yep, here it goes. Start recording. Here we go. Say what, mean Jean growled. Say who, mean Jean howled. Say you, just who do you think you're talking to? So I'm done. And you probably know that it, it, it has the play button here, but what you might not know 
is that you can shrink your voice recording down to fit here. You can make it smaller. I have to move it first a little bit until I get the corner button to grab. And you can shrink down your recording. Did you see that? And you can plop it right there. I really think that we should start doing things like that. In fact, on the next page, you're going to have to do that for sure. Because on page three, the question is, what is the author's message? Right? And I want you to give me both. I want you to give me something we should not do. And instead of writing or typing your answer, you can do the microphone button, shrink your voice down. I'll just I'll just practice. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Just practicing. And Remember, you can move this up and shrink it down and put it right there. Look at that. Ha! Then I can play and I can hear what you think we should not do. The author's teaching us to not do something. And then we should, right? We should act like Katie Sue. We should and make another recording to tell what you should do. All right, kiddos. I hope that makes sense for your reading workshop lesson today. Um, we're spending a lot of time thinking about a story. Uh, teachers call this reading comprehension, understanding, reading understanding. And that's a really, really important part of our reading. Later this week, we're going to go back to using those skills to try to read tough words. So we do a little bit of both depending on the day. All right, kids, finish your reading workshop work, and then you've got some reading to do on your own. 15 minutes of epic, or if you have books from home, that's great too.